All right, we're doing another fantasy basketball mock draft. This is Josh. This is the Trash Talk channel. Today we're going to be picking seventh in a 12-team snake, and we have our eyes set on a guard-based punt field goal build. We're hoping Steph Curry or Tyrese Halliburton falls to us at pick number seven. Ideally, we get Tyrese Halliburton, but realistically, he should be a top four, top five player. We're going to go ahead and pick Steph Curry if he falls to us. One more pick. Steph is there. We are on the clock. Our build is going to be punt, field goal percentage, and block. I already have the punt value pulled up here. You can see on my cursor, I have blocks and I have field goal percentage. We're going to be looking to put as many ball dominant guards that get high assists, low turnovers, steals. We're looking for everything with a soft punt of rebounds. Now, when you do this build, very often you end up hard punting rebounds. But the reason why I do not have it in the calculation yet is that rebounds is a category that is very easy to stream. You can always find guys in the waiver wire that are going to give you six, seven, eight, maybe nine rebounds. So when you're early in the season, the goal is to try to get as high of a seed as possible. You want to win every matchup possible. So in the beginning of the season, I only really try to punt two categories, catch rebounds, maybe even block sometimes with a good stream. And then as I get closer to the playoffs, I line up. Now, let's look at who we're going to be targeting with our second pick. Fred Van Fleet really jumps off of the table. Kyrie Irving is also a player that is very good in this build. Kyrie was eight last year. Fred Van Fleet was fourth last year. Um, it's going to be hard to say no to Kyrie at 18 if he were to drop that far. People are concerned about Kyrie Irving because of his history of tweets, because of the crazy things he said. We are seeing some crazy value still on the board for our next pick to be 18 here. And I see five or six people that I think are an incredible value, even Harden, who I think we'll have more clarity on. This draft is in August, by the way, guys, don't forget to like the video. It really helps out the channel and subscribe. If you want the most fantasy basketball content, we're going to be producing more drafts than any other channel. This is a tough one. Kyrie is off the board, which would have been a snap pick. Here we are at 18. I think that Fred Van Fleet has to be the pick. I think sometimes you go Harden here. Last year, James Harden was the seventh best player in this build, and Fred Van Fleet was fourth. Knowing that the Houston Rockets just gave the bag, put up some money icons. We got a new editor, by the way, Arslan. Shout out to Arslan. If you're in the comments section and you love this new video editing style, show him some love. We're all going to learn together. We're going to make some of the best fantasy basketball content. By the way, if you guys live in LA, New York, or Dallas, we're having a in-person fantasy basketball league. We will make content, play basketball together, beers and drinks on me. As we get into the third round, we're going to be looking at which players we want to target. DeJounte Murray kind of jumps off the bat. Last year, DeJounte Murray was 21st in this build. LaMelo Ball, LaBello Ball might be available sometimes. Trey Young might be available sometimes. I think Trey is already gone. Yeah, Trey has already been drafted. We are on the clock. I'm okay with going DeJounte Murray here. I'm just going to look down the board. Based on ADP, I think sometimes you go Brunson here. Brunson was 43rd. His high field goal percentage really helps. I think we're going to go DeJounte Murray. I like Murray at 31. I think it's safe value. Remember, guys, when you are punting, it's always okay to skip a round. What do I mean by that? If you get players that fit your build in the first and second round or first and third round, it's okay to go best player available if you have to reach. What do I mean by that? Well, I was looking at DeJounte Murray as probably two to three points of value for the spot I was taking him. If I look at my rankings, DeJounte Murray is going to be right there in the early 30s, late 20s. I think I actually have him in the mid to late 20s. Um, by the way, follow me on Instagram, Stram Show, S-T-R-A-M Show. If you want to be in mock drafts as we do these throughout the season, we're going to be getting more and more trash talk boys together. We're going to talk the most trash, insult everything but people's mothers and I guess wives and maybe religion. I don't know. Just try to be polite, but also mean at the same time. We are up in seven picks. So we're going to start to isolate some of the picks that we're interested in. I think Jamal Murray jumps off the board. One of the things that you can do, Garland has got to be up there. Yeah, Garland was 25th last year in this build. So we're hoping Garland can make it. Remember, it's okay to skip. 42 is probably a little early for Nick Claxton. 
Jordan Poole is a player that fits this bill very well. Last year was a down year for Poole, and he ended up being 89th. Man, horrible year for Jordan Poole last year. Are there any other targets that we want to be going after? I think in a perfect world, you get Trey Young in the third or in the late second. I think that he fits this very well. I think we're going to be very happy with Garland. If Garland can make it to 42, if he can hold on, we're going to be okay with that. Jamal Murray as a backup. Last year, Murray was 21. No, that's the wrong Murray. <laughs> 39 in the build. So that's like, I think we're going to punt. So if Garland is there, we're taking Garland and picking up that extra 17, 18 spots of value in our punt. If Garland is off the board, we're going to go best player available. I don't like picking Jamal Murray here at 42 with the injury concerns that he has had in the past, with the fact that they just went to the finals. I don't think picking Murray here is going to be a big value add. I think I want to go best player available with my fourth round pick. We've gone three players in a row that fit our build. We're going to go ahead. If we don't get Garland, we're going to take best player available. And we're on the board and Garland survives. So we've gone four picks in a row that fit our punt. Let's take a look at what that means. That means that we were able to get the number two player overall was Steph Curry. We were able to get the number four player overall with Fred Van Fleet. That is a big, big, big fit. And then we were able to get DeJounte Murray, the 21st best player, and we were able to get Garland. So our first four picks, not only are our first two dominant, but all four in the top 25. And based on last year's numbers per game, we were able to pick up about 17, 18 slots of value by using this punt. Okay, now we're hitting 55, and I'm really interested in Jordan Poole falling to us but I'm also prepared to skip around. Jordan Poole had a horrible year last year, but the Washington Wizards are going to put every single thing they can into giving him an opportunity to shine. One thing when you build around this guard-based build, it's very hard to get people with small forward eligibility, power forward eligibility that fit what you're doing. And Paolo is not one of them. I would be okay, especially here, if you're going to skip a turn with your punt, right? getting a guy who's got that small forward, power forward eligibility. What you don't want is to go 13 picks, all guards in a row, and you can't play. You know, Cam Johnson here at 55 makes a little bit of sense. He was 46 last year, and he has power forward eligibility. That's right on the money. I think Cam Johnson, ooh, Levine as well, doesn't have that eligibility. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to take Levine. Just because I think Levine's upside is way higher than 56 we're picking him. So we skipped around. Levine fits in the build, but not, not perfectly. He's 42. So picking him at 56, we were able to jump like 15 slots in value. There's a very good chance Cam Johnson falls. If Cam Johnson does not fall, we are completely without a power forward. I think Jeremy Grant is going to be really interesting for us. Cam Johnson is off the board. We are on the clock with 37 seconds. Man, Derek White is a guy that I would really believe in, but if we pick him here, we're going to still have no power forwards, no centers in here. Last year, Derek White in this build was 98th. Wow, he loses a lot of value when you take his high field goal percentage out. We're going to take Jeremy Grant. Last year, Jeremy Grant was 78th in this build, but he has power forward eligibility, and it's very, very, very tough to get power forward eligibility. We might consider trading Grant just like the Portland Trailblazers will. He's going to give us some scoring. His numbers would definitely go up if you include punting, rebounds. Terry Rozier, Simons, Austin Reeves. There's just a, a treasure trove of value in this build here. And you just see guard after guard that just dominates. I think sometimes we would go Jalen Green here. C.J. McCollum. Wow, this... This like 78 to 87 range is just stock full of guards, which makes me feel even better about grabbing Jeremy Grant in the power forward slot here. Um, one thing that you want to notice and you need to check your league, are you playing in a one center or two center league? Because probably the weakest part of this guard based build is if you're in a Yahoo public league or any two center league, this build is going to be a little weaker. This build is so much stronger in a league that only has one center position. So you want to know that going in. This is just a mock draft, but before you do your draft, make sure you check your league settings. And we are mostly, at this point, 
bots, right? But it still gives us an opportunity to talk through the build. Guys, make sure you're subscribed. It's only August right now when I'm recording this, but we're going to make these videos in the weeks leading up to the real drafts. We will have cash on the line. Over 5,000 of my own dollars will be in it. I think Terry Rozier is our guy. Last year, in a weird year where there was a lot of punting, Terry came in 37th. Clay is also right there. I think I'm going to go age adjusted, and I'm going to take Terry Rozier here. I wonder how good Simons was in this 58. We made the right pick. Now, another thing I'll suggest, you guys are noticed that I'm free-forming this. I'm jumping back and forth on the tabs, and I'm looking at the player values from last year, and then I'm doing the own math in my head on like how injured they are and what the teams are. What you really want to do, especially if you have a good idea of what players are going to be available, you want to have one or two draft boards. You have your draft board for if you get staff, you got your draft board for if you get uh, you know, Kevin Durant, whatever your first round pick is, you want to make sure that you have a good draft board. You know, I love all three of these players that we have selected here, and we're picking 90. I think that given where we are in August, I'm going to go Simons. And the reason that I'm going Simons is I do not know what Dame's situation is. And in a world where Dame is traded, or in a world where Dame sits out, Simons could absolutely explode. Um, you know, if Clay was a little younger, I would go there. But the fact that he's probably going to rest on a lot of back-to-backs, you know, Trey Murphy has that power forward eligibility. We would love to get him in the late rounds here. Draymond Green actually fits this build pretty well or as good as a center can because of all the assists he gets. Draymond was 123 last year. And you're going to say, oh, that's horrible. But watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the filter and take out all of the point guards, shooting guards, and small forwards, okay? And so when I do that, we're going to be left with just the players that kind of fit this build, but struggle in other ways. So you immediately see that in the late rounds, it's really slim picking, right? Like Trey Murphy is actually 53rd, but you got players like Julius Randle, Brandon Ingram, Tobias Harris. They're all ranked outside of the 60s. It's very, very hard. If you if you restrict this to just pure centers, right, then it gets even worse. Like the 10th best center in this build is outside of the top 100. So it's very, very hard to find a center that is worth rostering. You know, Bobby Portis and Kelly Olenek. Olenek is a guy that might be worth targeting there. Portis is probably gone. No, he's still out there. Portis would be good at 103. And Draymond is sitting there at 123 with the rare skill set. Man, and Clay fell to 103. We're going to go Trey Murphy for the power forward eligibility. So we snap Trey Murphy there at 103. Gary Trent Jr. is another player that just is an absolute monster in this build. But we won't be able to see him here because we don't have the guards selected. So let's add the guards back in. Gary Trent Jr. was 33rd. And you're able to get him consistently outside of the top 100. This build has some of the craziest value gains that you will see in any punt. Punt free throw and then punt field goal and block. It just has insane value changes. Gary Trent Jr. goes off the board. Great pick by the Gray Phoenix. I believe he's a Trash Talk subscriber. Shout out to that. We'll go ahead and check out this draft board and look at some of these teams. We have a Nicole Jokic, Desmond Bain, Lori Markin in team. Ooh, I like this team a lot. Bain and Lori with Nick Claxton in the fourth round. Jalen Green for some scoring. I think that Vincent went a little young in the late rounds. Younger than I like. Let's jump over and make our pick. We're going to take Bobby Portis here at 114. Again, he is a top 10 center in the build that we are doing. And we've got one center. If I was playing this and this was real and this was cash – I think I would go ahead and ignore – well, I would take Kelly Olenek here at 127 just because he's a rosterable center. But I wouldn't really worry about having two centers. I would use the second center slot as my uh, streaming slot most of the time, right? If Kelly Olenek is there at 127 and he's a top 100 player for us, he's rosterable. We gain a little bit of value, but he's a rosterable center. I'd go ahead and take Kelly. And Kelly lasts to 127. So we're going to take him here, expecting him to perform in the 1-110 range. And let's jump back over and look at some more of these teams. So we have a Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler team. I'll stop you right there. I'm not even going to look at the rest of the team. The problem with this team is that it's just too injury prone. 
your top three players are all expected to miss games. We got a Tyrese Halliburton, Sabonis, Carl Anthony Towns. I like this top three. Cat is a player who has been top 12 in value previously. Tyrese Halliburton is a first rounder. Sabonis can return first round value. You have three guys that have the potential. Notice, since Gobert and Anthony Edwards are on that team, it's not likely that Carl Anthony Towns is going to be a first rounder, but he's done it before. And then you got Jalen Brown and Sangoon. You're young enough. Actually, all five of the first five picks are young. There isn't a clear punt when I look at this, but I think that EJ has had a pretty good draft. Let's go ahead and make what I think is our second to last selection. And I'm just going to freeform this. I don't hate Brandon Miller here at all. I'm just rolling through and looking at some of the guys that are out here. I like the Thompson brothers as well. You could grab Kevon Looney at 140 here, and you would be very happy with it. I already have two centers. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Brandon Miller here. Just a complete gamble. At 137, I have no idea, guys, right now what Miller is going to project to. He could put up 17 points per game this year. Oh, do I take Ben Simmons for the memes? No, I've, I've, you guys know I love Ben Simmons. Uh, I'm going to probably, if I'm getting Ben Simmons with my last pick, I'm probably going to have Ben Simmons on every damn roster. It's going to be hard for me to see a guy that jumps out to me that I have to have more than Ben Simmons with my last pick. I like the Thompson brothers as well. Caruso is good here. I mean, dude, it's just going to be a meme, but if Ben Simmons is coming to us with the last pick, we're going to take him every single time and damn the consequences. Okay, let's go back to analyzing these teams, okay? We've got a Luca team where we go Luca with the fourth pick and then Mikael Bridges, Paul George, OG. I don't like it. Um, I don't think these players are particularly a good fit for Luca. I'm not really seeing a build here. It looks like he tried to have everything. I don't hate Luca at four. I don't love Luca at four. I, I think Luca at four is the reality of where his ADP is. Let's check out this next team. Uh, Demetrios, Jason Tatum, James Harden, LeBron James. I think you picked James. So if James Harden ends up on a team where he's playing hard this year, all three of your top three guys have first round talent, right? But LeBron's age and then Harden's injury concern and then also him asking out, I don't know. SGA, Anthony Edwards, Pascal Siakam, Chet in the fourth, Jordan Poole, Chris Paul. Okay, so here's my impression, right? I love, I love, I love SGA in the six. Anthony Edwards, I'm okay with. I think that there's a limited ceiling. I don't think you're going to get 10 rounds or, or 10 spots of value with Ant. It's very hard for Ant to go from the 40th best player per game last year to even the, what do we have him here, like 22, 23. I don't hate it, though. He's young. He's going to play a lot of games. He's hungry. He looks amazing for Team USA. Pascal Siakam, kind of on the trade block. Chet in the fourth. Chet is a guy that could, and I've said this for too many players, there's like 25 guys that could be first-rounders this year. Chet is potentially one of them. If he puts up a 16-10 double-double with three blocks, Chet has the capacity to lead the league in blocks. I like that a lot. Pool in the fifth, I think, has some upside on it. Chris Paul in the sixth is about value, right? Like, it's it's right on the line. I'm not taking Chris Paul in the fifth. I've been getting Chris Paul sometimes in the seventh. Chris Paul in the sixth is okay. Tyler Hero, um, I don't like this pick uh, for a lot of reasons. We don't know where he's going to end up. A lot of question marks. Austin Reeves, I like the pick. Kyle Kuzma, I like the pick. Nurk, I think that's a punt. You know, it's a total crapshoot. Herder, Sexton, Cole. You know, the fact that I read the whole team here tells me that Bobby's Bobby's not bad. Bob, Bobby's made some good picks. Uh, we've already talked about our team, and we'll look at it on the board again. Let's take a look at Sean. Sean went Dame Lillard, Devin Booker, Miles Turner, Victor Webanyama, Brooke Lopez. Ton of blocks. Ton of blocks. I think Sean has a good team. Um, a lot of question marks around it, like with where Dame plays, what happens with Victor, Web Victor Webanyama, Brooke Lopez's age. But I think Maxi is on the way up. I like Maxi in the sixth, right? That's sixth round Maxi. I like Maxi in the sixth. Marcus Smart is going to have a massive. This to me screams, this is going to be a playoff team and it has really high potential. All right. We have Kevin Durant going, that looks like to be ninth. Jaron Jackson Jr. in the, the <sighs> look, JJJ is a top 10 player. So if you got KD, JJJ, you're off to a massive start with only five letters. K, D, J, J, J. Brunson in the third. I love that. Walker Kessler, Jared Allen, Julius Randle. John Moran, I don't like. 
Uh, in most league settings, John Morant is going to really hurt you. If John Morant, which we don't have clarified yet, if he can be stashed on an IR plus and you know you're in an IR plus league, I'm okay with taking John Morant in like the eighth round. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh round. I think it's too high for Jaw. I don't think he's a top 100 player. Remember, if you have a great player and you don't make the playoffs, did you really have a great player? Giannis with the 10th. Giannis, Kyrie Irving, Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham. If you guys are still watching, jump in the comment section. Tell, tell everyone else how I feel about Cade. This is not Cade in the first. This is not Cade in the second. This is Cade in the third. Darren Fox is a good pick here. Rudy Gobert, Zion. Potal. So there's some redemption here, right? You have to get scoring and you have to get assists when you build around Giannis. There's a lot of popcorn stats here in the top three. And then Fox, Gobert, and Zion. You know, I would say that every game that his top six is playing, every week that his top six is playing, he's going to be favored to win against most teams. He'd run into an absolute ass whooping from the build that I did because it's just the it's the antithesis of big man builds. He's going to overwin blocks, overwin field goal percentage, overwin rebounds, and then he's going to get slaughtered almost everywhere else, um, including turnovers. And it's really rough because when you do this build um, and you pick the right guards, the one that I'm doing, you end up sometimes winning assists and turnovers, which is just a nasty Chinese finger trap. We got Tabby. Tabby went Lamelo Ball and Anthony Davis. I like that combination. Drew Holiday, fourth round, Kristaps Porzingis is sexy. Jalen Williams, Cam Johnson, D'Angelo Russell, Th Markel Fultz. Ooh, clap that. We love the Fultz pick. Fultz is really undervalued right now. Draymond, Kyle Anderson, Sadiq Bey. Okay, you know what? One of my favorite teams so far. Tabby is one of my favorite in the 11th spot. Let's check out Gray Phoenix. Goes Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, bam. Looks like a best player available. Definitely a watcher. So Trey in the 12th, I think that it's a little early for Trey based on last year's performance. I probably would have preferred to go, you know, Sabonis here. Well, no way. He, he went around the horn. So I like, I don't, you left Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, and Jaron Jackson Jr. on the table, Gray Phoenix. I think at least one, if not two of those have to be in your range when you go around the term here. I like Bam in the third. I like Booch in the fourth. I'm okay with Giddy in the fifth. I don't love Buddy Heald in the sixth. Gafford in the seventh is good. Jonas is okay. Duran is good. Trent Jr. is excellent. Schroeder is excellent. Denny is good. And you're on the it says you're on the clock for the last one. Okay, guys, that is going to do it. Actually, let's do one more thing. Let's check out the projected standings. So based on last year's performance, we are in the middle of the pack. We are the worst team in field goal, the best team in free throw, the best team in threes, the be fourth best in points. It's probably Ben Simmons bringing that down. Uh, we are one of the worst teams in rebounding. We soft punted rebound. But look at this. At this range, there's two, maybe three teams that we could beat, maybe four with good streaming. We can make that range up and get some extra wins. We're the second best assist team. We're the fourth best steals team. We're the worst blocks team, but we were trying to do that. But again, look at this. Only one block behind Bobby and two and a half blocks behind Gray Phoenix. You can win this category some weeks. And we are a good turnover team. Yeah, we're in the middle of the pack. Leaving us with a very mid-ranked team. Remember, this average is average to crap across all of the nine categories. But there's two, maybe three categories that we're not going to be focused on. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, drink the blood of your enemies and crush the souls of your friends. Fantasy Trash Talk out.